product could be tangible or it could be more, uh, you know, abstract. Okay, okay. but um, bottom line is, and here's why I say I agree with, with Justice on this, is that bottom line is, if your PR is good, then it means that people are talking about your product or okay. your service or your brand. And then um, if you want to move into the realms of marketing in the end, then we are hoping that that kind of PR is translating into some kind of sale where there's, you're getting to the point where there's a transaction where you're gaining money or some kind of reward that's valuable to you as an artist or as a brand for whatever you're putting out there. Great, thank you, Apioko. And you mentioned you mentioned marketing in, in passing, so we just want to know quickly: is there any difference between PR and digital marketing? Well, absolutely. Well, marketing in itself is a really huge umbrella, and PR is just a section of it. Um, under marketing, you have PR as one angle, okay. um, and I did mention that. And I think from what I said, you pick up that marketing and sales are not necessarily the same thing. You can market, but you can market for many reasons. And the reason why you would do PR most of the time is so that you're gaining top of mind awareness for your brand, for okay. your consumer or your audience. If we're talking about artists um, in, the, in this case, and especially when it comes to spoken word arts, um, or you want people to actually take some kind of action. So you're calling people to an action. It's either buying your book um, paying for streams of your work or okay. paying for downloads of your work or something of the sort. Uh, so PR is just a section of marketing. Now, is there a difference between PR and digital marketing? Absolutely. And I'm sure um, Justice and so this will have a lot more to say about that. But digital marketing is a, marketing is a branch of marketing and by extension, a branch of PR where you're using the internet or digital tools okay. to sort of you know, put your brand or your product or your service or whatever it is you want people to pay attention to out there. And so there's a way to run PR in a traditional space. Mm -hmm. And there's also a way to do it if you want it to work within a digital space mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there's a difference. PR, its own thing, fine, but there's even a difference between doing PR in a digital space and then doing PR within a more traditional space. Okay, okay, definitely learning something new here. So, Sandista, let's go to you then. Uh, Apioko just mentioned about PR in the digital space, and you being a huge contributor to the Wikimedia Group in Ghana. What would you say is the role of um, Wikipedia when it comes to PR in the digital space? Can you tell us a bit about Wikipedia and PR in the digital space? Okay, so um, the, when it comes to Wikipedia, yeah, everybody knows that it's an online encyclopedia. So certainly it is one of those digital platforms that um, you can find information that looks like it's promoting or mm. exposing or sharing something about someone, a place, an event or something. Okay. Um, but Wikipedia, as much as when you Google something, it's one of the fastest, or let me just say it, it's on the very first page of your search results, you are likely to find Wikipedia in, in the topmost you know, search, search items. It's not really a product that is meant to promote okay. people or things or places. Wikipedia okay. is an encyclopedia that looks to just document all notable things that, I mean, in terms of shared knowledge, having a shared understanding, we all know that these things are important. It's important that we document these things, um, these stories, entries, so that we can refer to them when we want to do research. Mm -hmm. So sometimes Wikipedia might be seen as, oh, a place to be. Once you have some popularity quickly, you want to get on Wikipedia. Once something gains some small traction, quickly people yeah. are asking questions. It's supposed to be on Wikipedia, but mm -hmm. that is not what Wikipedia is here for. Wikipedia okay. is just an encyclopedia which se seeks to document notable things, notable okay. people, notable events, notable phenomena. That's what Wikipedia is for. 
So mm -hmm. in PR, I would say that Wikipedia can be seen as an ally. I mean, okay. if you are a low term of person and you are found mm -hmm. on Wikipedia, I have heard stories where artists would go to an airport and when they were going through um, the, what I call immigration or, you know, they're asking them questions. So what are you doing here? Why are you coming to this country? And they were like, we are artists. We are coming to perform, mm -hmm. you know, trying to make a case. Um, I don't even know why they are being stressed because I'm sure travel documents will show mm -hmm. why they're here and, and mm -hmm. who invited them and whatnot. But according to them, the officials there looked for them on Wikipedia, okay. actually said to them, we are looking for you on Wikipedia first. Wow. And when I heard that story, I was like, okay, I now see why a lot of people just want to be on Wikipedia the moment they want to be known or they want to be seen. Mm -hmm. I understand now because Wikipedia is respected, but truly it's not for PR purposes. It's not mm -hmm. for promotion. I have a Wikipedia article and I even have to unlearn and not call it my Wikipedia article because it's not about me. Okay. Wikipedia articles about you, about a topic, they are gifts to the internet for people who are looking for unbiased, straightforward information about something. They mm. are the ones Wikipedia thinks about okay. when all these entries are being gathered. It is not okay. for the artist. It is not for the event. It's not for whatever it is that needs to be promoted. It's actually a gift, a free gift to somebody looking for information, uh, for research, for something quick. Yeah, mm. that's what Wikipedia is for. Okay, thank you, Sandista. I, I definitely am part of the people who believe that, A, hey, artist goals, get myself a Wikipedia. <laughs> yeah. So, and and I, I, totally, I totally understand that. Like I said, it's, 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 it's respected. So if you are there, it means you must be doing something right. You, know? exactly. you, you must have some kind of leverage or popularity to, mm -hmm. to, be, to make it there. But yes, it will make you visible, but it's really, that's really not the point. And a lot of the information there also, you need to know that you cannot control. Mm. So a lot of times I tell people, if you want information that you want to control, please build a very good website, okay. get some kick-ass SEO to get yourself mm. into, into search results and, and yeah, control the narrative about yourself. Because once you get on Wikipedia, it, it's not about you to control the information. There are thousands of editors around the world who, who put Wikipedia articles together. Okay. So if you think that, yes, one person you can hire or pay will change information and it will go unnoticed, no. Everything about you, even that which you don't want the world to know, will find its way on there about you once it's published oh. somewhere else. Okay. So okay. is it really a PR tool? <laughs> I'm not too sure. <laughs> yeah, so you no need to PR be careful. Bad PR, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly, if it, well, if you feel that way about it, because I mean, I know of people, someone who had been um, accused of sexual assault, it found its way onto his Wikipedia article, and okay. after some time, I realized that somebody had removed the entry. Mm -hmm. Of course, it would it would disappear. But what I'm saying is, if it's about controlling your image, controlling narratives about you. Wikipedia does not show mercy there. Okay. People have taken, yes, caught, you know, raised that issue in court um, that, okay, there's something there about me I won't remove, but mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a, a hard battle. Mm -hmm. It's a hard the, battle, uh, so, yeah. Okay, okay, but, sorry, yeah. No, no, I'm, I'm done. Okay, well, you wanted to add to what Sandista was saying? Oh, yes. I mean, Sandessa is a Wikipedia expert, and I, I can't argue with her. And she has said to me personally several times in personal conversations okay. pretty much everything she said. Um, reason why um, I began to look at Wikipedia the way I do now, more as, just as she said, an encyclopedia, a place where things are documented and stored for reference. Mm. And so that would bring me to another arm of PR that we typically don't talk about. A lot of the time when we think about PR, we think about the now, we think okay. about the fame, we think about it translating into cities and dollars or whatever it is. Mm. We don't think about the legacy of PR. And that's mm. an angle that exists where um, if you have very good PR now, then in the future, 
you have created some sort of a blueprint for people who come after you. And so it ties in with this whole idea of um, your Wikipedia page being a gift to the internet. Your information becomes a gift to society and to the community in which you practice or you work or whatever it is. So that if you're a poet, and I know that a lot of poets here, or you're a musician or you're a visual artist or whatever it is, your information or information about you and your work becomes reference for the university student who is uh, studying poetry later on and wants to know what poetry looked like between the years of 2010 and 2030, or to somebody who wants to become a poet at some point and just wants a quick place where they can get an idea of what the space looked like at a point. Maybe they need to build upon that and all that. So PR also has an element of legacy. And a lot of the time we don't talk about that when we talk about PR. I will definitely have to quote that last bit. PR, PR has an element of legacy. Perfect. Thank you, Apioko. And that will lead into the next conversation that we want to have. So now we, we've explored at least the basic definition of PR, found the, the differences between PR and digital marketing. And we've also got to realize that, hey, even Wikipedia is not really for PR purposes, but just like uh, Samista and you have added, it's for information and also teaching and then also a legacy element. Then let's explore what PR is in today's context then. I mean, like now we have social media, we have anyone can pick up and say, hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. So. What would you describe as effective PR in today's socially connected society? So let's, uh, let's continue off with you, Apioko, then we'll move on to Justice and Sandista. Okay, so have you ever heard of the phrase effective communication? Yes. Great. So we talk about effective communication. It's not just you thinking that you are communicating, mm -hmm. but the person at the other end of whatever you're saying, doing, whatever they're seeing on their end mm -hmm. must represent what you're trying to communicate before it becomes effective, right? It's the same with PR. Effective PR, um, and, and back to this idea of controlling the narrative, if there's a particular way in which you want to be seen, you want to be heard, you want to be recognized, and you don't control the narrative in a way that makes that possible, then you're not doing your PR effectively. Okay. Um, it means that you need to know several things before you even stop to draw up a PR plan. And one of those first things would be, um, what is your brand promise, for example? What is the brand in the first place? Is it your poetry itself? Is it your paintings themselves? Is it your plays? Is it your books? Or is it you as an individual? Or is it a cross of both? Um, and if it's a cross of both or one or the other, what is it supposed to sound like? What is, is the tone supposed to be? Um, who is it supposed to resonate with? Is it for families? Is it for women? Is it for men? Is it for the youth? Is it for just artists? And then um, what's your style? And are you putting that forward? Is your style showing on stage just as it's showing in your, your content itself or in your product itself? Um, is it showing in your person? Are you living the creative life or are you trying to separate you, the individual, from you, the artist? Um, what do the optics look like? Do you have a logo, for example? Um, whenever you get on stage, are there certain motifs that pop up? Do you have what we'd call a late motif, which is basically a theme song that follows you onto stage, for example? Okay. Or when people hear it, they associate it with you. Um, is your do you have an element of surprise to your brand mm -hmm. is it dynamic um, does it move with the times does it reflect the the audiences as they change as generations come and go you need mm -hmm. to decide all that about your brand you know before you now come and have a communication plan and that communication plan becomes the bedrock of your pr plan now in communicating, I mentioned earlier, you're either looking at promoting at one point in time, 
and promoting means there's something specific. So there's an event I'm doing. It's a, it's a poetry um, talk party. I want people to attend. I'm promoting that at this point and I'm leading it with my brand or say with the mic check brand or with the Poetry Association of Ghana brand, right? Um, in another breath, maybe you just want top of mind awareness. So I've put out a new EP, not because I want to sell it, but because I want people to remember that I'm the boss in this poetry space and they shouldn't forget that I am. Coca-Cola is a typical example of a company that does that. A lot of the time when they advertise and they do PR, it's not to sell. It's yeah. just to remind people that they're there because they recognize that different generations of people, different times and seasons come mm -hmm. upon us and everybody along the spectrum, you can't assume that just because my grandmother, the, my grandmother is drinking Coca-Cola, my granddaughter will, you know, okay. you must make sure that people have it at the top of their minds. So when you have that communication plan, how you want to project the brand and talk about it, how it should sound, how it should look, how it should feel, how it should affect people and touch them emotionally to respond, then you can talk about your promotional plan. And that's where mm -hmm. you get into the effective PR. So, at some point, do you need a television commercial? Do you need a radio jingle? Do you need a strong social media plan? Do you need to stage a campaign so that people can connect to your brand emotionally through the things that are relevant to them? Mm -hmm. But in all of this, I'll say that you must know your audience or so if it's a, a product, a drink or some clothes, you're talking about your markets, your clientele. Um, if it's your poetry or, or your, your, your art, you're talking about your target audience. Mm -hmm. I must say, though, that your target audience is not always the same as your target market. Okay. And I think I've mentioned this before. Your target audience could be other poets. It could be young people who you want to connect to experiences that you're talking about. But they may not necessarily have the purchasing power to pay for a 150 city ticket to attend a show mm -hmm. that you put up. So now you also need to be thinking about the people who can pay for your act. Mm. And that's where your PR plan becomes important. It must be effective okay. on both levels. Mm. Mm. That's a wealth of information. Thank you, Apioko. Um, let's move to you, Justice. So we are discussing what we consider effective PR in today's socially connected society. Um, what's your take, especially coming from someone who has seen uh, PR in quotes from Wikimedia, Wikipedia angle. Well, um, there's not a lot to say aside um, um, well, agreeing with what Apioka have said, but mainly um, if you want to have effective PR, it means you are building reputation. And okay. For me, um, I have my background is in um, digital marketing, and so okay. um, building uh, an online persona it's something that should be of interest to any artist. And you shouldn't you should know the target market that you want to reach out to, and what they are about. And so, okay. if you want to reach um, maybe top level management people your online persona should represent that. You shouldn't okay. um, be engaged in certain banters online that is going to sway away from the kind of people that you're targeting. And so you always have to be careful. You, For me, basically, it's, it's just um, know what you want okay. and then carefully uh, grow. If you, it's now you're starting, it's just you carefully grow your audience okay. um, around that. Yeah, I think everything that Apioko has said with regards to that, um, I, I totally agree with her. Okay. Well, since we are all agreeing with Apioko, Sandista, is there any plus or minuses from your end? We are discussing what we consider as effective PR. Well, I think that sometimes also, um, PR is not just about setting up from the beginning. It's also about managing crisis mm. and when matters come up. Okay. They, you know, you have to. From a personal experience, I've just seen how sometimes the first to speak might be right. Okay. Or sometimes, you know, you, you 
I mean, things happen to our celebrities and people will make videos, be exchanging mm-hmm. videos and all of those things. And sometimes you are subject to social media courts even mm. before the truth is, is figured out. Mm. Um, so I think all that I will add is, for now, we've been very concerned about when you are starting, you know, okay. your PR needs to be on point. But you need to maintain as well. You don't mm. get complacent. You don't think that, oh, now I've arrived, so I can just make any video, blast somebody, clap back, and whatnot. Sometimes the clap back could also be a breakthrough. I've seen yeah. that sometimes, yeah, people trend or people just become a thing mm. <laughs> right after doing something disrespectful or doing something mm. unacceptable that rather instead becomes better publicity for them but mm. i would just say that um people shouldn't forget their roots i mean sometimes when artists are starting out we're so excited about them we're supportive mm. we are attending their shows they are whatnot um, but maintain the community yes maintain the community it's also mm. a very important bit I've noticed about mm. how people carry you know themselves as artists mm. yeah. especially you. online because that's where I notice some of these things happen mm. Mm. Yeah. thank you Sandista so even when you mentioned um, how club bars can be breakthroughs for some artists I'm glad you mentioned consistency because that means that you will have to consistently be the one backlashing all artists <laughs> trying to keep that reputation um, <laughs> Justin Bieber became popular by singing cover songs and you know like so it establishes a reputation and then afterwards you try to break away from it then you see yeah people trying to become something that we don't understand or yeah, yeah. And, and, and receipts there's the so-called receipts screenshots from the past exactly all of those things. Exactly. You, you, you need to factor exactly. that in into your the future PR. Yeah. Mm. Know that it's mm. going to come back. So I'll write that down. The, okay. Yeah. Speechless from the past. That's uh, <laughs> it's good to, to remember. So now let's then talk about us as creatives. We've explored what effective PR is. Um Apioko gave a wealth of information when it comes to what some of the things we can do. But us as creatives now on this platform. How can we effective? How can we engage in PR, right? Uh, so now we are we are privileged to have media personalities on this conversation to give us all the tidbits that we need. So one o ones for the creatives that are on this platform. How can we engage in PR with you, with your media brand for? More specifically, uh, Apioko, we can start with you. Okay, so the question is how can creatives or artists engage in PR with my media brand? Yes. Okay. Um, so, which of my media brands, personal or professional? <laughs> <laughs> professional. Okay, so with a city brand. Yes. Um, now, when it comes to City, and particularly, uh, so I'll, I'll start from City FM. A lot of people know City FM to be the radio station that will play the music of underdogs, right? Will do an event and put a poet on and pay the poet for their mm-hmm. performance or for their services. Um, will organize an arts festival and and you know get involved and bring all these big people to come and see artists or do a fashion show and bring the creme de la creme who could possibly invest in a fashion business mm-hmm. um it's because we recognize what the importance of the creative arts are i mean for us here even our work is very creative you, yeah. you're you're sitting down planning and dreaming up content all the time it's not something in a textbook Of course, nothing is new under the sun and you're doing research and you learn from people and places, but it's a lot of creativity at play. And so we we recognize that. And we also understand what the creative arts industry can be if there's firm support from media and then by extension um, from anybody who is not necessarily a a mainstream player in the creative arts space, Mm -hmm. but who can support, be it with money or some kind of resource or PR or or media platform. So we've done that for a lot of the time and for many years at City FM. Now when City TV came, 
um, we had an added advantage because now the challenge with radio that we faced was if you bring a new musician, for example, or a poet that nobody knows onto radio, mm -hmm. the nature of radio pushes your listener who is not interested in what they don't know to tune off. Mm -hmm. And so for us, that's also a commercially viable, a commercially viable entity. We're not a, a charity organization, you know, even though we have our strategies and our mm -hmm. policies, we're not going to quick to bring somebody who our listeners don't want to hear. Okay. Much as we also try to set the pace and create, um, you know, sort of an interest in what you people typically wouldn't even know they're interested in. But when TV came, it gave us the added advantage of say, look, if you're bringing an upcoming act, be it a musician or a poet or a painter who, who nobody is really familiar with, you have the visual element. Mm -hmm. So if people can perform live in nice costumes and people can see the instruments and see the emotion in the singer's face or um, in the poet's hands or see how a painter is painting live in, in five to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. People can see, actually connect, not just now what they're hearing, but what they're seeing. And so it made it a little easier for us to create a platform for artists across the board to jump on and sort of promote themselves. Um, I must say, though, that it's not just any underground act or, or, or artists that we allow onto our platform. And it's because we want to know that if we are featuring somebody on our platform or we're going to take up the task of, uh, we're, I mean, we're not going to sign a deal with you and say we're promoting you, but you become our person. I'm sure a lot of people realize how we do things at City. When you're our person, mm -hmm. our artist, you, we throw the person in everybody's face because we see something and we really want the person to shine and we want to be a part of that success. So if we don't see a viable artist or a viable business coming out of whoever we're bringing on our platform, they're not going to bring you. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. So that's the first secret to it. So okay. you must be ready. You must be ready. Must and be ready. we cannot do that for you. Wikipedia cannot do that for you. No media entity can do that for you. Mm -hmm. You must be ready with something that we are supporting you with, um, to be it to, in documentation, in the case of Wikipedia, like we said, or in promotion, um, if you're talking about, about City. Um, but beyond that, beyond that, um, it's not just about giving you the platform and you being ready. Now, if you're ready in terms of what your craft is and how beautiful your art is and you're not ready to speak about it or to um, communicate about it or represent it in a way that makes people buy into it, then there's no point. You're still back to ground zero. Mm. And so another thing artists need to learn is that sometimes it's not you who needs to talk about your brand. Sometimes you need to let somebody who can talk about it convincingly do the okay. talking. Yeah. Okay. And so um, what I'll say here is um, you, I mean, it's not just, yes, artists can come and perform or whatever, but there are some artists who literally tell us, I'm not a good speaker. So can my um, instrumentalist speak or can my manager join me on set when it gets to the interview point? Because okay. they have a team or they've come to a place where they understand that they're, what depending on what they say and how they say it, it could either make or break uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the audience's opinion of what they've just done on the set, no matter how beautiful it is or how mm -hmm. wonderful it is, you know. And then um, I think, I mean, we don't charge artists for, for these things, but mm -hmm. sometimes it gets very annoying when artists or their management behave as if we owe them the platform because the truth is that we don't. Our airtime is is valuable. I mean, five minutes of screen time on my breakfast daily sets on CCTV is 6,000 cities for five mm -hmm. minutes. So if we've created a platform, we, yes, that's how expensive TV can get. It's not even the most expensive on the market. Mm -hmm. So if you, you're being given a platform, then you must make the most of it, but also appreciate it, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not act as though you are entitled to it. Now, when you come at it with a, with a, 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 with a spirit of appreciation, the way you perform on set changes, the way you speak changes, because you treat it like your first and last chance mm. to market yourself and to put yourself out there. Um, so for me, that's where it is. And then when the brands get a little bigger, 
because radio now we go back to that whole idea of what radio is and how just how it's structured really when you get a little bigger then the radio platforms are available um mm. to, to you know interact with you and of course if you have events we strike a lot of strategic partnerships with mm. with acts with and we've done it with a lot of poets as well where um, a notable poet will come and mind you at this point i'm saying notable will come and say and we also have the upcoming ones so don't don't get me wrong but mm. a lot of notable poets will come and say or musicians will say hey you know what um this year i want to sign a fifty thousand city contract with city fm so if you're having any event i'd like to be on your platform and then i want that in in airtime so that when i'm doing a show or i have a new ep out or a new book out i have the airtime to come and do my my promo or my media tour i can play jingles i can run lpms there's a gamut of that. And so I'm raising this because a lot of artists feel like um, every single platform you're on needs to give you money, physical mm -hmm. cash. But sometimes what you get in terms of value, if you struck a barter, a barter partnership with an entity that has the, the, the space or the, the um, opportunity for that may mm -hmm. actually be bigger than the 5,000 cities you collect at the end of a gig, even though you may be able to buy food and sort out your transportation, um, getting media airtime may help because now you have that in your bag and your EP comes out and you literally have 50,000 cities of airtime to just mm. come and talk about yourself because it's an MOU. It's not a gentleman's agreement, it's documented. So these are some of the things that um, I, I, I will mention. And just to give mm. a few examples, I mean, Nana Sasa, you've done a lot with Chief Moomin we have, Poetra Santua we've done stuff with, if you're talking about the musicians, Camido, Famille, Creamy, Mr. Drew, and I'm mentioning them for a reason. All of them, their very first appearances on television were on Breakfast Daily on CCTV. Okay. And today you see what where they are. And mm -hmm. now we've moved from that point where we were bringing them on radio to come and have conversations with a Bernard Avila on the City Breakfast show. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very systematic. And these particular artists I'm mentioning have become friends of the brand. But Chami Kwame would be another example because he's been with us for years, Stoneboy as well. Um, mm -hmm. they, they've been friends of the brand and they don't mess around with that relationship and we don't either. And so there's a mutual benefit that comes all the time. By the end of the day, the artist always gains their, their PR. Mm. Thank you so much for those up your core. Just to summarize, especially about being grateful for the airtime. Sister all cities. Woo! All right. So we are exploring how creatives can engage in PR now. And we're looking specifically at uh, Apio Core's uh, media brand, which is City. Justice, do you have any insights for us on how artists today can engage in PR? Almost everyone else on this platform, apart from our, this, our host uh, artists. So please speak directly to them. How can they engage in PR? Well, um, a few people that have worked, um, especially up and coming artists in that regard, is to build relationships. Um, okay. One of the most important um, work that you do in PR is to have relationship with a lot of people. And so, if it's a, a media organization that you want to reach out to, find mm -hmm. out somebody there, maybe an editor or a, a build a relationship with the person. There are also um, various people who are like offering PR services and you can contract one and then strike a, a form of deal with them to get you into very relevant uh, media. The blogs and all those things are good, but if you want to go far, those, those people won't um, get you far. So you have to be strategic on how you engage. And for me, once you, you do that, I think it will be, will be great for you because mm -hmm. uh, it, it also has to, a lot of the media folks to, um, it's about who they, they have a relationship with. If they don't mm. have a relationship with you, it's going to be difficult for them to open up to you. Mm. But once you have somebody who has that relationship, booking interviews. So you get a booking agent to book interviews for you, to book um, interviews on various platforms, 
those things to uh, things that are there. If you have money, you can unlock those channels very easily. But mm. if you don't have the money, it means you have to take a step and try and form relationships. Mm. Look for um, agencies uh, on LinkedIn or connect people on LinkedIn yeah. and reach out, send them code emails that this is what I do and I want to be known or stuff like that. And then mm. once you, you have to be constantly looking for avenues to mm. sell yourself and your music or your poet or whatever you are doing. So for me, these are like the, the little things that we've done for a few people in the past that has worked. Constantly look for avenues, also build relationships. And speaking about relationships, now at least the artists on this platform can try and establish relationships between you and Sandista. So when um, what happens when the artists say, hey, now I know Justice, I've been able to at least send Sandista a DM. Now I want to get on Wikipedia. How does the artist get on Wikipedia? Do they just come to you straightforward? How does it work? Let's start with you, Sandista. Yeah. So before I answer that question, um, I'm really interested in what Justice said about relationships. Okay. And I think because I have worked in what I consider, or those I consider as the biggest media brands in Ghana right now, in my opinion, which is City and Walker Media, there's one thing I've just noticed, that these organizations have feelings. They have what? They present, they have feelings. Okay. These, yes, the presenters who helped you when you were starting out, they're human beings. Mm. So don't make it and later on disrespect them. Mm. And when they give you the opportunity, don't show up late. Mm. Um, don't traumatize producers by your phone going off at the crucial moment. They are calling you and asking you if you are on, the away, on your way. I mean, Apioko is nodding and so I know she knows all about that. <laughs> So don't don't blow these chances you get. Mm. It doesn't matter how far you go, how high you go. The relationship is important. You mm. you don't disrespect people. You show up early. You show up in the whichever agreement that you had. Stick mm. to it. I'm not saying you open yourself up for disrespect. Maybe there are media houses where they disrespect people. I don't know that for city and and, and multimedia. In my experience, no. Um, the people are pleased to have you on their platform. They called you there to help them make also content for their shows and as much as it's promotion for you. So everybody has an interest in what is happening. So you don't go and blow it up. You build a relationship with sweat and blood, as they will say. Later on, when you become big, don't, don't go and mess it up. Yeah, because people remember. <laughs> so yes, you might, you might want to, to be careful. If you're having a bad day, the moment you enter a TV studio, a radio station, a radio studio, please, you're on holy ground. <laughs> you don't play with media like that. Yeah, snap out of it. I know sometimes we, we really get fed up, and especially for people in entertainment. Yeah, their lives are booked. Sometimes they are stressed, and then management is might, might be good or not. It has a toll on you as a person, your mental health and everything. But mm. the moment you know you drive and you park your car or your Uber or whatever in front of a radio station, you are going on air, you are going to interact with producers, know that these are the organizations that are helping you really. You need them. So you would want to be careful how you treat people when you get there. If you can see your hands, I have. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, Sandy has hit the nail right on the head. And I mean, just to add to what she said, I actually have a personal blacklist. Oh, but wow. then City also has a blacklist. And I'm sure multimedia and other media houses do as well. I will not tell you that you're on the blacklist. Ooh. But you know, you know, if you look back, you know what you've done. Mm. I'm, there are times when we, we go all out and support an act, be it small or big, however you want to look at it. I mean, they'll tell us, oh, we need you. We need to promote this. We need to promote that. We'll do that. Now, here is us thinking, oh, Charlie. We have a family member in this person. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. now we come to you telling you, oh, look, we're doing this impromptu event. This is what it is. We pour our hearts out and tell you we don't have sponsorship for it. Um, we don't have money to, to, I mean, to pay you. But look, we're willing to buy it. And then they give us business fees. Um, yeah, pay me 10K and costume me. Otherwise, it's not going <laughs> to Hey, like, I mean, you say everything. You, you actually come ready with a document. Look, mm. whatever amount you want, I'll, I'll give it to you in airtime. Whatever. They won't mind you. And then, you know, the funny thing, later, and sometimes it's just a matter of weeks, two weeks, three weeks later, they're reaching out to you. And 
what the funny part is they don't call the person who they were dealing with initially. They call someone else in the company thinking that, oh, it's a different person. So we'll go through. But the company has a blacklist, but you, you don't know. So that's a very important thing to know. Yeah. <laughs> Well, thank you for sharing that. I definitely didn't know there was a media blacklist. Okay, so Sandista, let's get back to you and Justice. Now, we hope that we are not in your blacklist. We want to pull some connections and get on Wikipedia. Yeah. How does it work? Yeah. yeah, so for me, I have noticed that, of course, and, and my, can I say integrity as a Wikipedian, as somebody that co-founded a community south of the Sahara when basically there was nothing happening on the mm -hmm. continent except I think South Africa and Kenya. After doing all that work, I have also been, found myself in a place where I just do not want to get annoyed with people and blacklist people because I've realized it's not about me. If the person is notable and the person has to go on Wikipedia, my feelings don't really matter. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be that person who in our quest for building open knowledge, I mean, for me, traditional media, they are profit-making entities. So it's what works for them. Mm. And, and, and yes, you can't go and disrespect people there. Now on Wikipedia, because it's like internet property, and what we're trying to do is to actually document notability or notable mm. people and things. Even if the person is annoying or has an attitude or slides into your DM and talks to you anyhow, or their page is deleted and they come, my page is deleted like you have something to do with it. <laughs> I, I always have to tolerate people because I have had experiences like that. Not all of them are rude, though. Mm. So if someone just, usually it's a slide into my DM, really. I want a Wikipedia article. Um, how do I get on Wikipedia? I usually start from, please, who are you? Because a lot of times when I know you, there is a likelihood that you're already even on that page. Mm. There are people who didn't have to do anything and they found themselves there. Mm. But there are people who also belong to certain topics that are not well covered in Ghana or by Ghanaians. There are certain topics that are not well covered by Africans. I mean, even internationally, certain women who have done notable things, you have their male counterparts or equivalents mm. on Wikipedia, but the women don't make their way there. As mm. a woman, if you are the wife of a great man or a popular or famous man, you can get an article by being a spouse of that person. It's like faster than you can get a scientist or someone doing great work, but it's a woman or female mm -hmm. will be able to get there. I think Justice can confirm that um, recent research showed that biographies of women, like the number of them was so low, mm -hmm. very low. I, I don't want to misquote the percentage. If he can get that, he, he can add it to my point. But it was so low and it was disheartening. Why? Why should, why should fewer women be on Wikipedia? Why aren't they doing great work? So my point is, back to the sliding into my DMs. For me, it's about putting information out there. So if you are notable, that's it. So I have to explain the notability criteria to you. If I know you, you will, I know you, then probably you're already there, but you don't know. If I don't know you, then it means it's a concern because usually a notable person, I think, should be known. But like I said, there are certain niches, certain genres that don't even make it onto Wikipedia, not because they are not notable, but generally that topic is poorly covered. Mm. So to just give a tip, it is not to say, do this and get on Wikipedia. But if you are this or you meet this criteria, you can be on Wikipedia, and that's what I'm going to share. So in the notability criteria, we have, you know, Wikipedia doesn't generate information itself. Wikipedia is not a research company, does not have any original research to its name. What it does is to curate or aggregate what has already been written about you. Maybe you found yourself in the Panama Papers or WikiLeaks or Daily Graphics publish something about you, a book says something about you, a journal covers some of the work that you did. That is how come we gather information and we put it on Wikipedia. So Wikipedia does not send Wikipedia editors out to gather. Uh, okay, so Justice said only 20% of Wikipedia articles um, has to do with women. Biographies have to do with women. And it was lower, <laughs> terribly lower. 
some years ago, but now there are efforts to, to boost that. So Justice, thank you for confirming. Um, so you, you, you just, you don't, um, you, I just explained the notability criteria to you. You have an understanding of that. And Wikipedia does not generate the information. We don't send reporters out to report for us, no. It is just what has already been published, what has already been peer reviewed, what has already been documented somewhere that is credible, that we can easily verify. Because you know, Wikipedians cannot travel the globe just to come and see who Patapa is. Or I can't leave my house and go to Patapa's hometown just to see if it's real. No, I might I should have seen Patapa on TV with this one corner craze that swept across the continent. I, I should have seen Patapa documented in, in a newspaper article or on the charts somewhere in another verifiable and credible medium before Patapa can find his way in, onto, onto Wikipedia. And you know, I know people who have actually said, but Patapa is on Wikipedia. Why can't this person be on Wikipedia? That is not what it's about. It's not about morality. It's not about you being in town doing the right thing. No, it's about notability. And the fact that you have been sufficiently covered in the press. So if you are an artist and you think that you want to be on Wikipedia, I'm not showing you how you can get on Wikipedia. I'm telling you the kind of people that Wikipedia documents. So you have to be notable. Do good work, be known. Don't be just hype. That's what the hype, <laughs> the people will hype you. But who are you? What, 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 what is your street, street creds or whatever they call it? Like, who are you to the business? Who are you to the industry? Are you just, you know, hiding in your, 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 <laughs> your room somewhere doing your own thing? Your appeal, that's what gets you into the interviews with the, the Al Jazeera's and the Daily Graphics and the Amayal Debra's and the whatnots. And then Wikipedia can say, you are notable because we will not come to the ground to come and check. We will not come to the concerts to come and see how many 10,000 people came there. Look, if Daily Graphic reported that, oh, Apiako had a concert, a million people came. Apiako wins an award. Apiako has done this. Um, um, social responsibility, Apiako is here. She's done, you know, the, the, the media covers you. And that gives us the sources or the references we use to write about you on Wikipedia. So that is the, the, the all important notability criteria that everybody who thinks that they should be on Wikipedia should know about. That I've just told you what people who make it there, these are some of the things they need. But for those of you who also want to be on Wikipedia, but, um, you want to write yourself onto Wikipedia or you want your PA or your manager, refrain because we have policies and guidelines that says that there shouldn't be conflict of interest. And conflict of interest is being too close to the person you are writing about. I mean, when I worked at, at, at City, I remember I'm like, I'm surrounded by greatness. There's so many people doing amazing stuff, but I, I can't write about them. I, I prefer not to write about them because I'm too close. I'm too close to the topics. Unless it's, I can really say that, look, I wrote this article about them objectively, then I can write. So there's a conflict of interest guideline, just like a not notability guideline I explained. That is also, also, also there. So when you come and slide into my DM, for me, I'm just interested in knowing if you are notable. Not to me, no. But usually I say, look, if you are notable in Ghana, I will know you. But not to me. I don't matter. But the media, what is the media saying about you? How well have the books covered you? How well has did the internet cover you? How well did the blogs, all the, the, the publications that matter to the, the Ghanaian culture, where we get our news from, how well are they covering you? And it's the same way that when something about you you don't like makes its way onto Wikipedia, then you might as well go and get it out of the daily graphic that covered you before you can come and talk about Wikipedia because Wikipedia got the information from there. <laughs> so I, I hope uh, I, have, I have said something that, you know, artists looking forward to sliding into my DM can, can, can think about before they come. I am, I am very sure you have. Those are very, those are very important points. And it, you, you answered a question that I had as soon as you said, um, people just slide into your DMs and say, I want to be on Wikipedia because, and Justice, please help me out here. From earlier conversations with Justice, he's been saying that um, you can't intentionally ask someone 
who puts uh, who puts articles or content on Wikipedia to put your to put your profile on Wikipedia. And so I just wanted to verify that. So Justice, please continue from where Sandista left off. Is there anything else that we should know about as artists to get on Wikipedia? No, so uh, I think Sandista has said largely um, what is supposed to happen. The only thing I would add also is if it's your, your poet or your entertainer that has won an award, a very prestigious award or something, and mm. it's covered, it's also another opportunity for you to go on Wikipedia. So it's not only about your coverage of your work, if you won an award, if you recognized by maybe an, a very notable international body, which there is proof to show that you you you, you are this person, you can get you there. Because I noticed that there are others that met the very basic notability criteria, but there's always a challenge that, okay, so this person has this article, that is it, like nothing else about the person. And so a lot of the editors, because they don't have a contest and they don't understand some of the things that we you know, they might attack it or they might target for deletion. And you have to show so many um, examples or courses why that article should not be deleted. We've had the same challenges with maybe in the past, where he, in his case, he went to pay somebody to get an article about him. And the person, because the person didn't understand the guy, the, he wrote the article and was very promotional. And so an editor saw it and was like, and they nominated it for deletion. And it was deleted as well. And he now got into us. Because it's been deleted, it's also another tall order to reverse that deletion. You have to argue so many times. And I don't think editors are fans of doing that. So usually, I always tell people, take your time, work on yourself, make sure that you are doing some good work. Once you are doing that, people would recognize you and then they'll put you on. And once they put you on, it's easy for us to also put you on. And so basically those are like the things that I always say. So aside what Sandista said, this is the thing that I can add to it. Okay, thank you, Justice. Sandista, you want to add something to that? Yes, I just want to quickly say that um, this will come as a shock to people, but there was a time Azonto, as big as it was, wouldn't have made it onto Wikipedia. Oh, wow. Or, yes, or it would have been that Azonto came from Nigeria. Because I was observing mm -hmm. that Azonto article from, the, it, was it 2011, 12? I'm, I'm not too sure when, when Azonto became a thing. For, forgive me if I get the, the year wrong, but I was observing the article and I realized that Ghanaian entertainment blogs have not substantially covered the topic. Um, what we had to our advantage, or the saving grace of Azonto, were all those videos that were shot in London and other cities of those competitions that people would have. If you remember, people will make videos of themselves dancing Azonto in groups, um, Ghanaians, other Africans doing it around the world back in the day. Those were the videos that helped make it make that claim that even a dance called Azonto actually exists. If not, Azonto would have never had a Wikipedia article because it was such a poorly covered topic. You couldn't mm. find any proper, well-written, credible source writing about Azonto, calling it a dance genre, calling it a song genre, among other things. Start information. So without the media covering you for who you are and for what you do, Wikipedia can only just look on. We can't do much. So you let this Azonto story uh, make you aware of what really this is, that a dance as big as it was, it was very difficult at a point, you know, you, you look at the page and you, you knew that this dance, this article might, might be either contested or removed soon because there was nothing. Like, you, you link to what? What are the sources, the references for building this article? 
But like I said, those videos, those YouTube videos that people would make dance offs, dance competitions with Azunto and whatnot, that was how kind of place you could make a case. Because Wikipedia is reviewed by a community of people, thousands and thousands of people all around the world who may not necessarily be privy to what is happening in your country and they couldn't be bothered. But that topic needs to be well covered. And then they can say, okay, this is not just somebody being um, a vandal or somebody being naughty or somebody trying to do promotion with Wikipedia. This is actually a notable topic, notable to the culture that the person or thing or place or event comes from. So we can leave it there and not delete it. Okay, thank you. I, I, the Azonto one definitely blows my mind. So that, that is alarming. I feel like you have your hands raised as well. Is there something you wanted to add? Yes, I just want to talk about this whole idea of um, who knows you versus who you know, <laughs> you know? Um, I mean, it's very clear that you may know a Wikipedia editor or someone who is within the Wikipedia community, but if no one knows you well enough, then obviously you are not going to meet that notability criteria. Now, how do you get people to know you? A lot of people think it's about lots of followership on social media, having huge numbers and whatnot. Now, here's the thing that there are some people who have really huge numbers but very little engagement on their social media pages and posts. There are others who don't have as many followers or numbers, but the engagement is massive, you know? So the two known people who won't like your, your page, but if you put up a video, you see that your likes are in the, in the tens and hundreds of thousands. Yeah, those ones, you know? But beyond that, as artists, we need to realize that apart from the fact that it's great to have multiple uh, sources of income and be involved in lots of different things so that you could, I mean, push yourself along when the money is not coming through the arts per se, it's also very important to tap into different networks. If you don't tap into different networks, it's just only artists who will know you. Only like-minded artists, you know, for the most part, probably. So if you're a musician, you're only rolling with musicians. If you're a poet, you're only rolling with poets. If you're a painter, you're only rolling with painters. And so the pool of people who actually know you and what you do is very limited. Whereas if you step into different networks, so you're doing some CSR project, you're volunteering when um, there's a beach cleanup or um, whenever something is happening um, in the sports world, you decide that you're getting involved, you're working part-time somewhere, you're opening up your network, or you're instead of going to chill in the club every Friday, which is not a bad thing when there's no COVID, you know, <laughs> instead of doing that, you join conversations like this, or you go to lounges, you wear your best suit or your best dress and walk into a lounge and try to engage with somebody who you feel may in some way, shape or form, if you tap into their network, have an influence on your art, you know, as, as you go along. So I'll tell you one thing I do. I have two call cards. I have my city call card and I have my personal call card as an artist. And when I go somewhere in as Brand City, I present that card, but I'm always quick to add, oh, hey, I'm a poet as well. Take this. Likewise, when I enter a space where I'm there because I'm a poet or a creative artist, I have my city card as well. So the brands, you know, sort of rub off each other. It's very important. Now, even if you're not carrying call, call cards and you're not doing anything official in these spaces, building your network is very important because most of the people who are following you on social media in the first place are probably not Sam Jonah. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> Okay, that uh, that really is the truth that you have to call. And you are right. Um, who you know and who knows you can be very different. I especially like the part where you talk about having um, even a part-time job as an artist because, hey, you have to pay the bills too. Okay, um, we are almost done. We are about to wrap up in the next 17 minutes. I've seen a couple of questions. I like to read them before I ask my last questions for our panelists. For our panelists, so okay, the poet. Okay, the poet is asking, what's the minimum credible reference to qualify for Wikipedia publication? Sandista, so either you or Justice can answer this for him. What's the minimum credible okay. reference that you need? So according to the English Wikipedia. You need a minimum of, I think, five or more. 
Oh wow, okay. Yeah, but there's also a catch to that because you need to satisfy other um, 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 other rules or other notability criteria or aside having those articles to also um, be, be recognized. Mm, mm. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, you have to start working on your, um, your networking skills. I want to open the floor. If, do, if anyone has any more questions, now is the time to ask them. So we are going to give the next 10 minutes to the audience to ask any questions that you have concerning PR. We have media personalities, we have City, we have multimedia group, and we have Justice, who is also uh, a, a professional data marketer. And then we also have in capacity people from the Wikimedia group. So if you have any questions related with you as, a, as an artist and PR, now's the time to ask. You can either type it or you can raise your hands and we'll ask you. Whilst we are waiting, this session that we are having is especially targeted because of an event that we have this May. That's on the 1st of May, we have a special session with, with the Wikimedia group, who will be Justice and his friends will be taking us through Wikipedia, how it works and how to get content on Wikipedia. It will be at the Nubuke Foundation. 100% will be uploading the image soon. But it's going to be this, it's going to be 1st May, 2021. And I think it's a great, uh, it's a great place to first of all network and then also learn more about how to get content on Wikipedia. You can also become a contributor to Wikipedia and put other, other information on Wikipedia. Like Sanista was saying, a whole horizontal wasn't on Wikipedia. So now if you want to uh, document Jollof or something else, this is the best place to learn it. Okay, Sanista, your hand is up. Yes, I just wanted to add that one of the key things that um, as, as Ghanaians writing Ghanaians or Ghanaian matters onto Wikipedia is photography. Okay. You know, yes, a lot of the articles don't have photos. And it's just because photos have to bear a certain um, line sense that does not infringe on the copyright of the, the person who took them. So sometimes when you put photos there, they will be removed. So what the people in the creative space can help us with is they can organize themselves and just let us know that, oh, we are available on this day. You can take photos of us, upload it onto Wikimedia Commons, which is a sister wiki of Wikipedia that holds all the photos you see or most of the photos that you see on Wikipedia. So we store them there. And, and, and when your articles are up or the articles about you are up, we can have photos to, to support the, 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 the information that we put there. Because sometimes you have articles there but no photos. We don't even know what the place or the person or the thing that Wikipedia is talking about looks like. And it's just there, it's the stuff. And, and, and it's an issue with a lot of, of, of articles that tell, um, that gives information about Ghana, even Africa. There are competitions and there are activities and programs, justice will confirm, that are trying to break that gap or fill that, that gap and just get more photos about Africans and our activities, our way of life, our, our lifestyle on there. But yeah, we need to work harder. So that's a, an appeal I have. It's not just about also landing on Wikipedia. We also need photos of you at work doing what you do, but donated by you or the people, no, by the people that took the photos. If not, Wikipedia will not accept them because then it would look like we are infringing on the rights, the copyright of the original photographer. Maybe the person wants to use it for commercial purposes and we have uploaded it for encyclopedic you know, purposes, no. So we just want photos that we are clear in our minds that they have been donated and the, um, the, the license, the copyrights on them have been removed. There's a there's set of licenses that allow content to stay on Wikipedia. They are known as Creative Commons um, licenses. We can't go into that now, but we need photos under those licenses so that we can have a company the Wikipedia articles about you, about your work, about the creative space. We can accompany those articles with, with great photos that 
can help the pages look nice and, and, and serve as a proper encyclopedic page we all like to flip through and look for information from. All right, thank you. Uh, Sadista, what did you say the name of the, of the sister site is for the, uh, uh, for the pictures? Um, Wikimedia Commons. Wikimedia Commons. Can you please yes. type it for us? Okay. And someone... Uh, oh, someone has done it. <laughs> okay, perfect, perfect. So we have two more questions. Someone wants to find out if the articles need a certain word count to be on Wikipedia. No, no word counts needed. Okay, okay. And but the next it, it just it just has to have enough information. If not, to be classified as a stub. But even that is not mm. going to be removed because of word count. Still. Okay, okay. And Kwame Shelter wants to know how credible the blogs or website should be to be considered. I yes, think that, to that, it, yes. that issue, even elsewhere in other cultures, it's, it's not static. I know organizations, news organizations that initially, hmm, their links were being used and then suddenly something happens and they are no longer considered credible. So it's, it's a, it's, can I call it a life cycle? But when you say how credible, we don't have a meter or anything to measure just yet, at least. There's no technology for us to, to do that. But what we know is that it's, it's consensus. There is, there is a list, though, that features some of these um, websites or blogs that apply. But there is generally some kind of consensus or collaborative consensus that people come to to determine if something is, um, is, is, is credible or not, or let me say a publication is credible or not. So that's, that's the best answer I can give to that. We don't have any measurements, but it's just common knowledge, if I can put it like that. I mean, here, when you, you, you hear something from a Maya Debra versus maybe some other blogger, you will know what you want to believe. If you hear something from City, Multimedia, Media General versus some blog, I'm, I'm sure you exercise some kind of discretion. It's always like, for us in the Ghanaian community who edit, we also know the publications that as Ghanaians, we all share in, in the respect we have for them. So that's how I, I would put it. Okay, it seems Amishadari is not around. Um, there was another question. I think from... I think he muted. Oh, okay. sorry. Yes, I was oh, muted. No. Yeah. I was muted. I was asking, can you give us a list, at least for the artists who don't have that innate ability to decipher whether or not the the blog or the website is credible from your perspective justice sadista and apioko what are some of the blogs or websites that you consider credible so like maybe a list of 10 off the top of your head you could also type it i guess um, yeah i think maybe typing will help okay but but yes. for me i can i can say the ones that I use, I cannot speak for Wikipedia necessarily. Okay. I would say me, I use, but look, if I see that you've been covered by daily graphic, I'm cool. Okay. Unless I suspect something that is off, um, I, I, will, I, will, I will take it. Um, citynewsroom.com, myjawonline.com, Adum Online. Um, we have, I mean, I'll do that to some extent. Or if, if it's an opinion piece, you will want to be careful. But if it is like, proper um, article written, breaking the news about something, you know, that, that's a different book game altogether. But if it's like opinions, usually those kind of blogs, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't touch them. I don't want any issues. So I don't touch them. Um, entertainment wise, you also, because I've realized that the very hard news websites, they also don't cover artists very well. 
So if we use them as a standard, <laughs> we are going to have problems. Then artists are not going to be covered properly at all. So you realize some have entertainment tags, entertainment sections. We, I generally look out for that because I know entertainment as a topic is not that well, um, or the arts, sorry, no entertainment, I just look at the arts, not that well covered, even by books. So I will admit that I, I, I get stuck. I mean, when we were having this poetry um, um, collaboration, for example, I used to tell Justice that Lubuke has the books. He said, yes, um, are we able to get all that we need? Because if we are going to rely on, rely on online sources, we, we are not going to get anywhere. Some, some spaces are just not properly covered. So to answer your question, daily graphic, citynewsroom.com, my journal line, Adun, um, Daily Guide has a website, I think I've seen something like that. Um, the UN may cover some under their cultural topics. They, it will surprise you how some of these international organizations cover our art space even better than our own government does. Um, you have BBC sometimes featuring, doing features out of Zira, highlighting our creatives, the people in our creative space is even better than our, we do. So I, 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 I snoop or I look around. Sometimes I just Google people and, and the links come, come up. So I just use common sense and my personal knowledge of, of the media system, media mm. system and who, who to trust and who not to trust. Okay, thank you, Sandista. So if we can uh, continue typing the list in the chat, that would be great. Apiopo and Justice, I see you also, you might also have some. But uh, it's, almost, it's almost time. We have five minutes more. Unless there are any more questions, I want us to quickly round up. For those who, who have joined after we started, we have been exploring the artist and PR. We looked at what the difference between PR and data marketing is. We also explored how Wikipedia works. We also looked at what are some of the notable, um, what some of the notable platforms are that you can get um, yourself listed as an artist to be on Wikipedia. But most importantly, we looked at how you can have effective PR as an artist. And Apiapo was gracious enough to let us know what city what city fm looks out for for an artist sandista also shared some tidbits and then we have looked at how you as a creative can engage in pr when you are targeting these media houses so finally before we round up we want to look at before we go um takeaways uh what will be your final um uh, what will be your final tips for all of us uh, Paul, Joy, uh, Justice, and Sandista. I think we already looked at this, but we want to say, as an artist, what's the most important? What are some of the most important things to focus on when you are building your brand to have effective PR? Let me also just add that my check in collaboration with the Poetry Association of Ghana has also been very has also been very instrumental in getting artists on Wikipedia. And that is something that has been spearheaded, spearheaded by 100% and Apioko and a few of the artists on this platform. So Apioko, maybe you can talk a bit about what we've been doing in that direction before we round up. Um, I think uh, Sadista and Justice will tell you that this is a conversation that started almost three years ago. Um, um, just um, Sandy observed that, look, look, I mean, you, I came to your poetry concert. There are obviously a, a lot of great poetic talents, but how do we get, <laughs> you know, some people to know about them? How do we document this? Because for the longest time, unless you're in the poetry space, you hear about the sages of poetry, but you don't know the contemporary Ghanaian poets. And so this conversation started back then. And of then, I mean, we, we, we got into something and then COVID hit and uh, it, we all have our lives that we're balancing because this is not all that we do on either side. But um, really, we've got to the point where there's obviously this beautiful collaboration. And the idea is to document poetry, not just poets, but poetry as well as a craft, as the, as the words that we know them so beautifully to be, as the performances and all that. 
and the Nubuka Foundation is involved in this as well. And so there was one workshop on the 27th of March, Justice, that was right, I think. Yes, where um, you know people got together to try to start, of start documenting poetry on um, Wikipedia and also learn the skill of how to become a Wikipedia editor. And there's another one on the 1st of May. And I just want to say, these are very rare opportunities. And I'd expect that artists on this platform and beyond take advantage of it. Um, for, for some of us, because of where we stand and just the paths that life has led us along, we're privileged to come into contact with lots of different people and lots of different things. And so it gives us certain opportunities. But I do recognize that that's not the case for every artist or every poet. And so it would be very selfish of us not to do what we can to sort of try to give back to the community and pull other people along. Because if poetry in Ghana is credible and notable, it helps all of us in the end. So these are very rare opportunities. I don't want us to take them lightly. And um, a very big um, you know, thank you to Mike Check and to the Poetry Association of Ghana and to Halakasa for coming on board. And of course, to the Nubuka Foundation as well for giving us a space where these workshops are happening. And, like Justice said, at some point, there'll be some virtual ones as well. I know there are a lot of people who are outside Accra, outside Ghana, but who are very much Ghanaian, who are also interested in, 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 you know, in this opportunity. And I'm sure at some point, Justice and Sandesa and their team will let us know where we can move from there. But for me, it's really just about, like I said in the beginning, leaving a legacy. And I'm always willing to sacrifice what is within my power to to do that and i believe it's the same for 100 percent and um all the groups that are involved in this wonderful thank you so much for the summary of your call and because of time i'd like to say a special thank you to justice apioko and sandista for joining us tonight i know i was going to ask for last minute takeaways but i'd like us to stick to time as well so thank you all so much I have been your host, Amisha Dai Ofori. I'm with Mike Check. We host Rewind with Amish every Thursday at 7.30. This was a spin-off because of the Wiki, Wikipedia Loves Poetry, Wikipedia Poetry in Ghana event that's coming on on Saturday, 12 to 2 p.m. at the Bouquet Foundation. You definitely want to be there if you have benefited from this. I'd like to hand over to 100% now to give us any closing remarks. Thank you all so much for being a part of today's event. Thank you so much, Amish, for holding the fourth down. I would like to extend my thanks to all the speakers, Sandista, Apure Core, Justice. Thank you so much for, give, uh, for, for spending your time with us this evening and to share with us your experience and knowledge that you've gained you know, over the years. And I hope this, I hope we have more of these conversations. I think everybody who has come here has benefited. The only thing I would like to, to say is that I would encourage anyone who can to be part of the Saturday workshop and to view it from the angle that, as Sandra Stark mentioned, it doesn't seem as if the media houses that we have in the country are great or excel in covering our art form. And that is specifically the art form of poetry. So if we don't have that, that doesn't mean we, would, we wouldn't reach out to them, but we also have to look within ourselves to see how we can help each other. Even if it is not now, we at least let us start a culture, develop a culture whereby, because I don't think everybody who is a poet is just a poet. We are multidisciplined. We are creatives for that reason. And even more importantly, our creations stem from writing. So I think we have the skill set to go about contributing to Wikipedia via articles. And not necessarily just with regards to poetry. I'm sure there are other areas within the Ghanaian space that are in need of notable personalities or, or events being put out on Wikipedia. As was mentioned, there are some notable personalities in the form of women that are not being 
that have not been articled, and I think we can contribute to that. Then, if my grandmother always used to say, "If you do good, you do it for yourself." If we are doing this and we are doing it with honest intentions and because it just deserves to be done, I believe the same will be done, you know, for us as well. So I encourage everybody to be there. I wouldn't want to take up you know much time. Thank you for making the time to be a part of this. I'm, I personally am really grateful on behalf of Mike Check and the, the speaker. I'd like to thank the audience members and I would like to once again share my, um, my gratitude, show my gratitude to the speakers for making the time to share with us their knowledge and experience. Thank you so much. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I would, I would say that, that that's it for this evening. Um, Thank you. And we would let you know of when the next events are. Hopefully we'll be seeing a lot of you people on Saturday. Thank you so much. Keep safe out there and have a good night. Great, thank you all. Um, up your call and Saturday, if you could share your social handles so we can slide into your DMs, <laughs> we'll be grateful. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh yes, Justice and you too, sorry, sorry. I'm a guy, so I put too much food in. All right, thank you everyone. I'm signing out. Speak soon. I'll keep the room open just for a couple of minutes in order for people to take note of the social media handle. But otherwise, after that, we'll be closing you know, the, the room out. But look forward to more of these discussions in the months to come. Thank you so much once again to everyone, including the speakers, for making it. Thank you.